Hey, it's JP here for the Slant Lens. I've got Elsie here with me today. Hi. We're going to show you how to use a speed light as an off-camera flash. You're going to need a trigger, and one of the reasons you want a trigger is because you want to get this flash away from the camera. If the camera has this flash on it, that's really more of an event light. It's for that kind of run and gun, gritty kind of urban look. But when you really want beautiful portraiture, you want to get the light away from the camera. Uh, my mantra is if you can touch the light or the light stand, it's probably in the wrong place. So we're going to show you how to set up a speed light as an off-camera flash. We've got the FJ-80SE. We're going to put that in a softbox, show you what the bracket to use and how to get that set up so you can use a speed light as an off-camera flash. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using a speed light. The advantages for a speed light are most people already have them. Uh, you buy one of these because it's one of the first kind of flashes that a person gets when they start into photography. So it's a natural place to gravitate to to be able to move things to the next level. Uh, price is a great advantage. They're not quite as expensive, so they're inexpensive, especially when you get into one of these, uh, like the FJ80SE is under $200. It's an easy entry point for getting into a flash that you can use on camera for events or off camera for a, some kind of off-camera flash. And last of all, they're small and lightweight, easy to carry with you. You can put two or three of these in a bag, just easy to have them on hand so it's not hard to have them with you. So that weight factor really is an advantage. Disadvantage, they don't have quite as much power. This is an FJ80, 80 watt seconds. It's not gonna compete with the sun like an FJ200 or 400 would. So it does have a disadvantage in that. They also have a bit slower recycle time, so they don't recycle quite as quickly. And battery life can also be an issue. But for most part, people gravitate into this kind of step. You get it as an on-camera flash, you move to maybe getting it off, but hold it in your hand, and then you move to an off-camera situation where you can use it as an off-camera flash. That's a natural progression for people as they begin to learn and understand photography to use that speed light for off-camera flash. Some people use it their entire careers and love them. So let's show you how to set up the FJ80 SE as an off-camera flash. Let's see how we set it up. In order to set this up, we're gonna to go to manual. When you turn on your strobe, it'll be here. We're set on Lumix, so we're ready set, uh, for our Panasonic. We're on manual, which is what we wanna be on. Um, we can set our sync right here if we want. We want to keep it at, re at uh, first curtain sync, not uh, high speed sync, and not second curtain sync. We're going to do it on first curtain sync. And then we're going to go to our manual. We're in client mode. You see the little Z there with the arrow on it. We're now ready to set up our trigger. Uh, our trigger is going to be set on the same one, channel one. So we're on channel one, channel one. Uh, we're on manual. Uh, right here, we can ch turn this to turn it off to sleep, or we can go to TTL. We don't want TTL for what we're doing. We're going to do manual. Now when we're in manual mode here, we have complete control of the strobe. As I click on the green, I can move the power down, move the power up. Gives me complete control of it in manual mode. So I'm now going to either be using a light meter or just uh, shoot and test to be able to decide to figure out how powerful I need to make this so that it's going to match the aperture I've chosen for my uh, shot. So there's how to set up your trigger and your FJ80SE to work as an off-camera flash. So here's the bracket that Westcott makes to be able to uh, adapt your speed light to be able to hold a softbox. So it's basically a bracket. Uh, this allows you to adjust it. And on that bracket goes this little piece here this kind of clicks around, push that in, pop that in place. Now this is going to sit inside the groove right here. And we're going to take this little right here. And we're going to twist that into the back of it. And that holds it in that groove. Now this is the switch plate. So with a switch plate, we can take our softbox and the softbox simply slides on to the switch plate and we're ready to go. Our speed light goes right onto the back right here. It's got a uh, cold shoe. Tighten that down. Well, I should have turned that down before I put it in. Put that in the cold shoe. Ooh. And you can see we're too high. So we'll lower this bracket down.
where our speed light's gonna come right through our box right there. Tighten that down. And now we drop our box on that switch plate and we're ready to go. So it's got that cold shoe and the switch plate. You put any size soft box on this that you want. You can put the, uh, I'm using a beauty, a 24 inch beauty dish with the insert in so it bounces inside it, makes it a little softer. But you can put, I put large boxes, extra large octodomes, uh, any size on this with that switch plate makes it so it works really well. There are other types of brackets you can get that just simply clamp around the speed light and the speed light kind of just sticks out the back. I mean, those work, but I like this with a cold shoe a lot better. It allows you to make sure you can adjust this in and out and the height and just gives you the ability to put a softbox on it really easily. So that's the bracket from Westcott. You need that if you're going to adapt your speed light uh, into a, and be able to have a softbox on your speed light and get it off camera for an off camera flash. All right, for me, this is a very classic lighting setup. I use it all the time. I've got a rim light from behind. That rim light's gonna give me a nice rim on, her, uh, on the back of her head. And that gives me a second light because I'm using a speed light as my key light on her face, but I need separation from the background. And so shooting with a backlight always helps to accomplish that. I'm also looking into the shadows back there, which gives me a beautiful, uh, just a beautiful soft area. I'm gonna wanna see some sunlight, so I'm not looking to look into dark, dark back there. I'm going to be looking for the lighter areas back there as I shoot around to find the spot that gives me a nice beautiful bokeh in the background. I also, I always use the light to the camera left side or camera right side and I shoot on the opposite side of the person and I have them turn towards me. So she turns towards me, now I'm shooting into the shadow side of the face. The light is on the other side of the face from me. So right here I'm looking at Elsie and the, cam the light is on the left side of her and I'm on the right side. That means that the shadows are gonna to fall towards the camera and that's a beautiful way to shoot. Shoot into the shadow side of the face. So now I can go through the formula to get that background to do exactly what I want. Let's see that formula. First thing we're gonna do is set our camera on manual. Then we're gonna choose our aperture based on our creative situation. If I've got a big family with a row of people in the front, a row of people in the back, I'm not gonna shoot at 2.8. I'm gonna shoot at least at 5.6, maybe f8. I need some depth to be able to get the people in the front and the back in focus. Uh, if I have a single portrait of a person, I may go to 3.5, I may go to f4. Um, 2.8, I can go to 2.8, it's a very shallow depth of field on a full frame sensor, uh, but you're gonna set that aperture according to the creative decision, what you want the image to look like. If you have a person standing with a big row of trucks behind them and you wanna see all those trucks, then you're gonna choose an aperture that's gonna give you more depth of field. You're gonna choose F8 or 11. Uh, if you want the background to just go away and become just a nice soft bokeh, you're gonna choose a really open aperture like 2.8 or F4. So once you've chosen your aperture, now you're gonna set your shutter to 1 200th of a second. The reason you're gonna choose 1 200th of a second is because that's the fastest that your camera can sync with your speed light as an off-camera flash. Then we're gonna set our ISO at 100. Now we're gonna take a picture and just see what we've got. Now we're going to raise and lower the power of the strobe to match the aperture we've chosen on the camera. If we choose an F4, it's gonna be much easier because we won't need as much power. If we use an F8, we're gonna need more power out of that uh, speed light. We may have to run it on all the way to nine, give it full power. So it depends on the aperture you chose and how close you get your, your strobe to the subject matter. That's gonna depend on how much power you need to set it at. We've set our strobe and on manual so that we have concrete, complete control from our trigger as we talked about when we set it up. Now from our trigger, we can dial the strobe, give it more power or less power so that it's going to give us the nice light that we like on the person's face. Every situation as you change and move is going to uh, be a little different. You look this direction, the background's much brighter. Look that direction, it's a little darker. Um, when the sun gets uh, bounces off from something and opens up the face, maybe there's a white wall, it's gonna bounce light on the face, the face becomes very bright, and so you don't need as much strobe power. So every situation is different. I couldn't possibly give you enough scenarios, but this gives you a formula to be able to change and to adapt to the situation you're in. With experience, you become better at this. You'll be able to set it up quickly and get a nice image. Um, I generally shoot, like we have here, with the sun as a backlight. You've heard me say that many times, I'm sure. That gives me a second light as a rim light. And now I can use a strobe to really light the face, give me beautiful light on the face, and I can keep most of the ambient off the face because the person standing standing pretty much in the shade. So let's go shoot some images using this formula. We'll keep talking as we go, and it'll help it make more sense for you.
So I'm doing several things here. I started off with the sun behind her as a rim light and shooting towards all the dark, but because the sun's hitting kind of splotchy spots on the uh, grass back there, I get some nice stuff, but uh, it's harder to find a nice background. I'm looking now into this kind of just nicely lit background here, but we're using the softbox itself uh, to create shade on her face so that I can let it be lit by the strobe. So she's standing in the shade of the softbox and I'm kind of moving around so that box gets a little bit to the side, gives us a little bit of drawing on her face and looking into that background back there that looks really nice. It has a little bit of life in it, has a little sun, gives us a little bit of bokeh, beautiful. There we go. You see if I zoom out where that softbox ends on her shirt, on her uh, dress, it gives me, uh, it almost looks like the dress is two-toned. We get a shadow on the neckline. So I have to stay in pretty tight in order to use this. I'm shooting at 200 millimeters so I can give myself a nice shallow depth of field. Background falls out of focus. Light's really soft right now. So it's easy at 200th of a second. I can use, I'm using my strobe on a, a seven, which is not full power. I can make it much brighter if I needed to. Uh, but it just gives me a, enough light on her face and allows me to have some nice out of focus background. So I'm shooting with a 70 to 200, uh, 2.8. It's a G2 Tamron EF lens adapted back to that, uh, to the S52 Panasonic. This lens is beautiful at that 200 millimeters. It's just sharp. It gives you beautiful images. It doesn't, doesn't uh, vignette in the corners. It's just really beautiful lens. For our second setup, I just quickly had her stand into the shade of this tree take the sun off from her. I have some sun in the background on those trees. It should give me some really beautiful bokeh. I'm at 200 millimeters. I'm gonna set my aperture at f3.5 and at 100th of a second. So 100th of a second, I'll take a quick image and just see exactly what I've got. Um, I have my strobe set at seven on power, but let's just see how the strobe is working here. All right, so at 200th of a second, that background is pretty dark. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open that up a stop. I'm gonna go to 100th of a second and take another shot at 3.5. Oh, it's much prettier. Look at the bokeh back there. It's just beautiful. I've got the, isolate, the light isolated on her face because I don't have any sun on her. The strobe is giving me light on her, but the separation comes from that bright background. Okay, I can also shoot some full body here. Very contextual. I see the picnic tables back there and the trees. Maybe I'll see less picnic table and more trees. So I see, we see the trees are very brightly lit in the background. When I turn my strobe on, now I get a nice light on her face. Yeah, oh, that looks so nice. I'll have her hide some of those tall trees back there so that they don't look, they're not so uh, harsh. They're side lit and they're just really strong elements. So if I move over just a little bit, the background becomes much prettier. I don't have those hard trees in the background making the background really, really uh, busy. So that looks really nice. All right, nice little setup. Let's go on to another one. So here's a third setup. So I quickly, I see this tree back here has got some nice light on it with some dark behind it. So I brought the light around because some light from the left on her face. I'm gonna stay with my settings here. I'm gonna go three, five at a hundredth of a second and just see what I get. I'm gonna be right, I'm gonna use all that tree back there as our background. Oh, that looks really pretty. Got the sun on the right, giving us a little bit of rim on her hair there. This looks really pretty. There, we'll take a quick look at it without the strobe. So our light is about gone here, and I'm, so the strobe is becoming more of a, a, it looks more strobe lit. So what I've done is I've gone to an 80th of a second so that I have a longer shutter that makes the, what is, what light is left here is a little nicer. It opens it up a little bit. I'm actually using some with the sun in the shot, which can be interesting. Um, I'm gonna try one here where we just let the sun be in the shot and really underexpose it. Like we'll shoot at F11 and see exactly what we've got. So, but this setup here is just a, just a backlight with a light on her face, 80th of a second at 
and we're gonna go on to the next setup. So we're really exposing for the sun now at 200th of a second at F14. I had Jelaine bring in a, the uh, reflector here just to bounce a little bit of light back in on her face. Uh, but I'm really looking for that ball sun in the background and then some light on her face. It looked really good. So just a fun, different look. All right, let's wrap this up. For me, using a speed light on your camera is a first step. Taking it onto an off-camera in hand is the next step, but really a professional photography, doing really good professional work is you get the speed light off into a softbox using a trigger. Now you can use it as a lighting tool. You can move it anywhere you want to be able to create the image that you want. And that makes a speed light into a flash lighting instrument that really makes sense. So get your speed light off the camera, get it into a softbox. Now you can make great portraits, you can make great family images. It's just a lighting tool that's going to really take you to the next level and look professional. So if you like this video, take a look at some of these other videos that we've done on speed lights and other lighting techniques. So I hope you enjoyed this. Keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking.